May you know the presence of God as you reach out to others and care for them as beloved children of God. Today's reflection is entitled The Golden Rule. The Golden Rule, which is present in one form or another in many world religions, is that we treat others as we would want to be treated. In some ways it could be taken as a practical advice of how to succeed in life. Yet as a disciple of the Lord Jesus, we are asked to take it a step further and to love and care for others not just so that they will hopefully treat us in a similar way. Let us now listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. Chapter 13, verse 2, and 5 to 18. Abraham was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. Lot, who went with Abraham, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support them if they stayed together. Their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. There were quarrels between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and those of Lot's. At this time the Canaanites and the Perizzites were occupying the land. So Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land at your disposal? Please separate from me. If you prefer the left, I will go to the right. If you prefer the right, I will go to the left. Lot looked about and saw how well watered. The whole Jordan plain was as far as Zor, like the Lord's own garden, or like Egypt. This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot, therefore, chose for himself the whole Jordan plain, and set out eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram stayed in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the plain, pitching his tents near Sodom. Now the inhabitants of Sodom were very wicked. In the sins they committed against the Lord. After Lot had left, the Lord said to Abram, Look about you, and from where you are. Gaze to the north and south, east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you, and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth. If anyone could count the dust of the earth, your descendants too might be counted. Set forth and walk about in the land, through its length and breadth. For to you I will give it. Abram moved his tents and went on to settle near the terebinth of Mamre, which is at Hebron. There he built an altar to the Lord. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue, he who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be disturbed. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, do not give what is holy to dogs or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. 
This is the Law and the Prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, Our readings provide some valuable lessons and examples of living a life as a believer. In the first reading, Abram lets Lot choose which land Lot wants and Abram will take what is left over. In being generous to his nephew, Abram is blessed by God by a renewal of the promises God has already made, descendants and land. The responsorial reminds us that those who practice justice will experience God's presence in their lives. In the Gospel, Jesus challenges his disciples to realize that following him will not always be easy, but it will be of infinite value in the long run. Abram and his nephew Lot have left their homeland in Ur and Haran. They arrive in the land of Canaan. Once disputes arise between Abram's shepherds and those of Lot, Abram decides that he and Lot must separate. Abram allows his nephew to decide which area he would like to use as the place for himself and his herds. Lot looks down into the Jordan Plain, the lower Jordan River and the area around the Dead Sea. At this time it is a lush and verdant area, comparable to the Nile Delta. Lot chooses this area. Abram remains in the hill country of what is today the West Bank of Israel. Key to my understanding of the passage is Abram's decision to allow Lot to have his choice. Abram is gracious to his younger kin in much the same way that God has been gracious to Abram. Because of this, God renews the promises made to Abram, vast number of offspring and a vast land and promise of blessings. The Psalm 15 proclaims the blessings of those who act with justice, treating others as they should be treated, not taking advantage of anyone. Those who act rightly will be able to know that God is with them. There are three messages in today's Gospel pericope, 1. The value of having a relationship with God, 2. The golden rule, and 3. The difficulty of taking the road least traveled. All three remind us of different aspects of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Jesus reassures his disciples, including us, that having a relationship with God is truly a blessing of great value. It is not something which should be taken for granted. If one does not fully appreciate that the blessings of God, that one does not sense how valuable it is to be in relationship with God. It is a not the easiest activity to always focus on one's relationship with God, and it is not something that everyone is choosing to do. One guide to being a disciple is to think of one's actions and see if one is acting towards others in a way one would want others to deal with oneself. As we reflect on the readings, the strongest thoughts come from the importance of thinking of others first and treating them not just with justice, but even more than justice, with the utmost concern. We, as human beings, are self-concerned. From infancy, we are absorbed with having others care for us and meet our needs. Part of becoming mature is to be able to look beyond our own self-interests and be concerned about others. This is not a stage in development at which everyone finally arrives. Being a disciple of the Lord Jesus takes constant work and it is difficult. It means thinking of others as much as, or more than, thinking of oneself. It is part of moving along the less traveled road or going through the narrower gate. It requires staying focused and not just flowing with the crowd. Those who are able to act in this way truly know that God is with them, even though they may be experiencing the most trying of times, those years of hell. It is then that the responsorial today truly echoes in them, 
those who do justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The personal question or action for today, what is my approach to life, particularly when I am faced with challenges? Am I able to look beyond my own problems and treat others as individuals who are loved and cared for by God and therefore people whom I should also treat lovingly? How can I acknowledge another individual for who they are without being judgmental or impatient? Into whose life can I bring a sense of appreciation and value by the way I treat them? Blessed are you, Lord God, the lover of all individuals. Through your goodness, you give value to each individual by sustaining them in existence and loving them for who they are. You ask us to look beyond ourselves and see what you see in them. We have often failed to appreciate others for who they are, your beloved children, worthy of respect. We have expected others to treat us as we want to be treated, but have not extended that same treatment to them. For our lack of loving concern for others, we seek your pardon and forgiveness. Continue to empower us with your Holy Spirit so that we can follow the example of your Son, Jesus, who showed your loving concern for each and every individual he encountered. As always, we give you the glory and praise as we pray in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Brother, who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen.